do we fix this disaster? The Rangers lose their seventh straight here on Sean and RJ. Let's bring in senior writer from ESPN.com back on the fo- uh, back on the show, and he was recently writing about your Texas Rangers. David Schoenfield here on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Dave. How are you? Uh, good morning. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Do the Rangers finish first, second, or third in the American League West if you had to pick right now? <laughs> well, it certainly has gotten a lot more interesting than uh, 10 days ago. That's for sure. Look, here's, I would put it this way. I think the Astros are going to finish third uh, of the – Two Texas teams, they're the one I'm more worried about. Their starting pitching is really struggling right now, other than Justin Verlander. Framber Valdez, other than that no-hitter, he's been terrible his last eight or nine starts. They have some injuries. So there are three. So I think it's going to come down to Seattle and Texas. Obviously, the Mariners are red hot right now. But honestly, my level of concern over the Rangers, and I know this losing streak is ugly, it's not. I'm not that concerned. They're going to keep scoring runs. Yeah, okay, they've had a couple bad offensive games the last week. Starting pitching, eh, I'm not that concerned. Scherzer, Montgomery, they've been really good since they've come over. Obviously, the bullpen is the big issue. Bullpens, they have these stretches where they can pitch poorly. Will Smith, how trustworthy is he? Not very trustworthy right now. So, long answer I'm still picking the Rangers to win the division. And I'm a Mariners fan, so that pains me a little bit to admit. Uh, you know, you mentioned the offense. Uh, you know, I know the offense is sputtered here. So you, But you're still uh, – is it bullish, Sean, where you're up on it? Yes. Bullish? Okay, very good. I'm, I'm not a all stock my, guy. All my stocks are bearish. All right, I'm not a stock guy. But uh, you still think the offense is closer to the early season, even 300 average with runners in scoring position, than it is the current offense we're seeing? Yeah, look, was it probably due for a little regression? You know, sure, you mentioned the the figure with the runners in scoring position, which was, what, absolutely insane, right, you know, for a large chunk of the season. It's still a pretty deep lineup, you know, maybe not quite as deep as early in the year as some of the guys like, you know, Tavares have fallen off. Obviously, the injury to, to Josh Young has, has been huge. But, yeah, look, there's still got a lot more depth than either Houston – or Seattle on that lineup. You mentioned in your recent article for ESPN talking about whatever, what every MLB contender needs to do, what needs to break for them as we head into October. And you talked about with the Rangers, of course, like getting Evaldi back is a big part of this, but also this one run game issue that they keep running into. And they very famously in 2016 had an unsustainable run in one run games in, in the positive way that they were like 37 and 11. It carried them to the AL West title this year. They've really struggled. They're nine and 17 there. How much of that is is generally predictable. Like, like how much of that is something that we say, hey, that's a bad marker versus that's something that's going to balance out and they're not going to keep losing one-run games at that rate? Yeah. I mean, you don't want to completely dismiss it, especially if it is, you know, the bullpen blowing, you know, leads in the late innings. That can be a real issue. Although with, you know, Will Smith in particular, I'll point out when he was with the Braves in 2021, He had a bad regular season. The Braves were terrible in extra inning games. Smith lost a bunch of those games. And then they get to October. He doesn't allow a run. So it's not really that, at least as far as what's going to happen in October, it's not predictable at all. Teams can have a bad regular season, one-run games, and then it's a whole new season once the playoffs start. You can turn that around with the flip of a switch. So, Minor concern, yeah, but predictable, not really. David Schofield, ESPN, joins here, 105 through the fans. So do you see this bullpen as kind of like the Nats in 2019 where they had like a five-something ERA in the regular season? Uh, Like they're at that level bad? Uh, And, and, you know, the Nats bullpen did okay in the postseason. I mean, they improved their ERA by almost two runs. Yeah, again, very unpredictable. You know, one thing we've known, you know, look, we look at what Houston did last year with – they had about, what, seven or eight relievers you could count on. Certainly that's the preferred situation going into October. The Nationals, 
that was a bad bullpen. They had about two relievers, if I remember, Sean Doolittle and Daniel Hudson, who they could rely on. Remember, they used starters in relief throughout that postseason. Strasburg, maybe that's a reason he's now heading into retirement, blew his arm out that October. Patrick Corbin came on in uh, game seven and pitched three shutout innings. Um, so now the Rangers have some starting pitching depth. So using, you know, you only need a four man rotation so they could push a couple of their starters back into relief. That creates a little more depth. When you look at, you talk about how you think Houston is clearly going to finish third for you in this AL West race and that it'll be a Seattle Texas thing. Do you think this is the kind of thing that we're looking at with that final four game series, the, the last weekend in September, uh, in Seattle between Texas and Seattle, like, do you think we're only going to find out who's winning the division that weekend? Is it going to be tight all the way up till the final game? Yeah, I think so. You know, I watched a lot of Seattle. They're look, they were kind of underachieving all season, especially on offense. So the last month or so, the offense has finally kindly kind of kicked it into gear, especially Julio Rodriguez. So yeah, what seven the Rangers and the Mariners play seven of their last ten games against each other. So. I do think those two teams are going to battle down to the wire. The one issue is Seattle. Um, they were going to go to a six-man rotation, um, but one of their rookies got hurt, so they're back to a five-man rotation, I guess. They have two other rookies in their rotation. George Kirby, you know, he's their best starter, but he's pitched more innings than he ever has. He's only in his, what, second season, so... I think for Seattle, you got to worry a little bit about are these starting pitchers going to hit the wall, and that you know might help Texas pull away. But I think it's going down to the wire. Uh, David, what would you say is the biggest advantage that Texas has over Seattle down the stretch, and and maybe something where Texas is vulnerable compared to Seattle? I'm looking at the schedules right now. I know Seattle. I think they play Oakland this weekend. But then their schedule really picks up. Like, they've had a little bit of an easy stretch lately. They played the Royals. You know, they played, you know, they have Oakland. Um, but I know in September they got the Astros a lot. They got the eight, the uh, Rangers a lot. They got to go to play New York, which even though the Mets aren't great, playing in New York's never easy. Um, I'm looking at Texas. So, yeah, you know, Texas, Minnesota, Mets, Minnesota, the next nine games, that's a pretty favorable stretch, right? I know the Twins over 500, but they're not that good. Then you got Oakland. So I think the Rangers have a little bit of a schedule advantage, but that, that's a minor thing. Um, mostly I'm just looking at, at the lineups, and I still think Texas has, has the better, deeper lineup. David Schoenfield from ESPN here talking about the Rangers collapse right now on your home for Rangers <laughs> baseball. Is it a collapse? What's the word you would use? Struggle is too light? Well, let's put it this way. You know, that what the lead's one game. As soon as if, you know, we end up in a tie, then the pressure really starts mounting, right? Um, consider especially how big their lead was over Seattle. Obviously, their lead over Houston was never, what, more than three or four games, I think. Um, but Seattle was 10 games back, you know, a month ago. So if the Mariners catch you, yeah, I think we can kind of start talking, uh, use the word collapse, except there's always the wild card as a fallback, right? You know, now that's not a sure thing either because mm -hmm. you still have to factor in Toronto and Boston, um, so if you make the playoffs, that's the bottom line. Of course, you want to avoid that that wild card series. But I think collapse only applies if you completely miss the postseason. Who's your AL favorite? <laughs> that's a good question, right? Because what Baltimore has the best record. I'm still not buying their starting rotation. Um, obviously, their bullpen is dominant. Their lineup's pretty solid. Tampa Bay, somehow they're hanging in there with all their pitching injuries with the Wander Franco situation. Um, certainly, it looks like they're going to at least win a wild card, but do they scare you in the postseason? Not with that, that pitching. Um, so, I, I think, it, I, look, I love the AL because it is so wide open. Um, I think Texas, if they, I think whoever wins the AL West and get that by might be the team I would pick to come out of the American League. Is is there a team that is not among the favorites, but like a wild card team that you think 
is that one that nobody kind of wants to see get in there. I thought San Diego could have been that team that the, the favorites didn't want to see in there. Is there a team that you've got pegged for that? Yeah, I mean, in the American League, I'd put Toronto um, just because their lineup feels like it's underachieved a little bit all year. But if Vladimir Guerrero gets hot at the, at the right time and Volpe Shed gets hot, that's still scary. But their starting pitching is really good with Kevin Gossman. And you say Kikuchi's been one of the best pitchers in the American League the last two months. Jose Brio has had – kind of a, a, a rebound season, and their bullpen's pretty good with Jordan Romano and company. So I, I don't think anybody AL wants to play Toronto. Over in the National League, you know, the Phillies, they're in a wild card position, you know. Um, they're not going to win the NL East, but certainly we saw what happened with Philly last year coming from the number six mm-hmm. seed to, to reach the World Series. The Phillies – Again, lineup depth, experience, you know, they have Tamiya and Ace and Zach Wheeler. I would not want to play the Phillies. Uh, David, the Angels are cursed. I don't know if they need to start sacrificing yeah. chickens like Pedro Serrano was <laughs> trying to do, but um, what is the new number for Shohei, the new contract number for this <laughs> this offseason? Because it's probably not $60 million a year anymore. Yeah, I don't know what you guys think. I, I'll go with what my colleague Buster Olney said, and this makes sense. His contract is probably going to be kind of a two-tier deal, right? He'll get paid as a DH, which could be – that could be close to $300 million all by itself. You know, he's not going to get Aaron Judge money, you know, because Judge has defensive value, in, you know, in the outfield. But even if we say $300 million is a DH, and then the pitching part of it, probably all going to be incentive based based on game started and innings pitched you know he'll get you know a certain baseline maybe 5 million a year and then that can you know bump up to to big money if he stays healthy but i guess the question what's the risk teams are willing to take on here you know yeah the hitting provides a baseline of enormous value right you know, how much do you want to pay for the pitching? And that's how many teams are going to be willing to fork over. So, look, is he going to get that five, $600 million deal? Probably not guaranteed, but he still might get, you know, 350 plus a lot of incentives. David, we appreciate the time. Thanks for coming back on the show. And uh, worst of luck to you, uh, your Seattle team. <laughs> Well, the Mariners have an old slogan from the 80s called anything can happen. And I keep hearing from my friends who are Mariners fans that this is the year that anything will happen. But we'll see. I'm looking forward to those those final 10 games. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate you, man. David Schoenfield from ESPN on your home for Rangers baseball. Anything can happen except the Mariners in the World Series because that's never happened. <laughs> it's never happened. It will if they win the ALOS, according to David that's there, right. though. There you go.